Hi, and welcome to AP Chemistry Review with me, Dr. V. We're counting down those final days to the AP Chemistry exam, and I know you're working really hard. So in this webcast, let's look at free response question number six from the 2021 exam. Now, the bulk of my time, of course, in this webcast is going to be about the question, but you should know that this is one of the short free response questions, and that means it's scored out of four points. Before we go any further, grab your calculator, your periodic table, and your AP Chem formula sheet. I'm going to go through each part of the question, but what I encourage you to do is listen to me, set up the question, pause the video, try to answer it on your own, and then listen to my explanation. That's what's really going to help you the most in terms of getting ready for the AP exam. And then you can also keep track of your score as you go. Did you get the point? Did you not get the point? How can you enhance your answer to make sure it's really thorough and complete and detailed? All right, let's jump right into the problem. A student is studying the properties of calcium sulfate and lead 2 sulfate. The student has samples of both compounds, which are white powders. Part A says, the student tests the electrical conductivity of each solid and observes that neither solid conducts electricity. Describe the structures of the solids that account for their inability to conduct electricity. You should be looking at this and saying, oh, I've got two ionic compounds and they're both solids. We know that in an ionic compound, we have an alternating array of positive ions and negative ions. So calcium sulfate would have calcium ions and sulfate ions in some sort of 3D pattern. In order to conduct electricity, the ions need to be mobile. It's really all about ions. It's not about electrons here. The ions need to be able to move around. And in the solid, of course, they're all in a fixed position. All they can really do is vibrate in place. If they try to move too far in X, Y, Z directions, they're going to bump into their neighbors. So they're in these fixed positions and they're not free to move. And therefore, the ionic solids are not able to conduct an electrical current. They don't have mobile ions. And that is the gist of what you needed to say to get the point for part A. Just as a tip for when you're doing this in an exam setting, you do not need to write your answers in complete sentences. Bullet points are great, so you shouldn't need really more than three bullet points to answer a question. If you're writing a lot more than that, you're probably writing too much. The student places excess calcium sulfate, the solid, in a beaker containing 100 milliliters of water, and then places excess lead to sulfate, also the solid, in another beaker containing 100 milliliters of water. The student stirs the contents of the beakers and then measures the electrical conductivity of the solution in each beaker. The student observes that the conductivity of the solution in the beaker containing the calcium sulfate is higher than the conductivity of the solution in the beaker containing the lead to sulfate. Okay, what's the actual question? Lots of setup here. Which compound is more soluble in water, the calcium sulfate or the lead to sulfate? Justify your answer based on the results of the conductivity test. Now you may have done some conductivity testing at some point in school. Conductivity testers can take different forms. Here's a simple one that just has a light bulb that lights up if the solution has ions in solution, if it's an electrolyte. You're not expected to generate these kinds of pictures for your answer. I just wanted you to see what it would look like. So the calcium sulfate has a higher conductivity than the lead to sulfate sample. So I've shown the bulb for the calcium sulfate being brighter. Since the calcium sulfate has a higher conductivity, the calcium sulfate must be more soluble in water. There must be more ions of the solid calcium sulfate that went into solution than went into solution for the lead to sulfate. So you need to make sure when you're answering this question that you specifically say it's the calcium sulfate that's a higher solubility, comparing it to the lead to sulfate, and really talking about the ions in solution. That's really the key point that you need to make here. And this was worth one point. The left side of the diagram below shows a particle level representation of the contents of the beaker from the calcium sulfate that we did in part B. The question asks, draw a particular representation of the lead to sulfate beaker and the ions dissolved in solution in the right hand diagram. Draw the particles to look like those shown to the right of the beaker. Draw an appropriate number of dissolved ions relative to the number of dissolved ions in the beaker on the left, which of course was the calcium sulfate. Particle level diagrams are something that you should expect to see in at least one question on the free response portion of the exam. And so the calcium sulfate solution is the one on the left. And we need to draw a particle level model for the lead to sulfate solution that we know has a lower conductivity and therefore fewer ions in solution. I found that when I did this, it made sense to assume I had equal moles of each ionic solid added to the beaker. So I want the same number of total ions present. For the calcium sulfate, that means I have seven total cations and seven total anions. This is important too in that I do have neutral compounds. So the number of cations I show total in the solution in the sample should equal the number of anions that I have present in the sample. 
So I'm going to draw my lead ions in green and my sulfate ions in gray because it was just more interesting to me that way. But the idea here that you really need to show with your particle level diagram is that there are fewer ions in solution for the lead 2 sulfate sample. If I have a total of seven cations and seven anions, more of them are going to still be solids in this sample and fewer of them are going to be in solution. I chose to represent one cation and one anion in solution and have six cations and six anions at the bottom. That was the core idea you needed to have. You do need to make sure that your compound is electrically neutral, so you do have to have equal numbers of cations and anions, as I mentioned earlier. And that was what you needed to show to earn one point. There is one final part to this question. The student attempts to increase the solubility of the calcium sulfate solid by adding 10.0 milliliters of 2 molar sulfuric acid to the beaker and observes that additional precipitate forms in the beaker. Explain this observation. Let's think about this from a chemical reaction, all right? If I have solid calcium sulfate, it can dissociate into calcium ions and sulfate ions, and it would establish an equilibrium. By adding the sulfuric acid, I'm essentially adding a source of sulfate ion, which is a product. And if I add products, I'm going to make the reaction proceed in the reverse direction in order to reestablish equilibrium. I can also think about it from the equilibrium constant expression. It is an equilibrium. I can write it KEQ expression or a KSP expression, which is all about the calcium ions in solution and the sulfate ions in solution. And that KSP value, that equilibrium constant, of course, is unaffected by the stress because we're not changing the temperature. I think it's safe to make that assumption here. By adding additional sulfate, I'm making my reaction quotient Q greater than the value of K. No matter how I think about it, whether I think about it from Le Chatelier's principle or whether I think about it from Q versus K, because I'm adding additional products, in order to reestablish equilibrium. The system will proceed in the reverse direction to reestablish that equilibrium. And on the reactant side, of course, is the solid, the precipitate. I'm going to make more reactants and therefore I'm going to have more precipitate forming. And that is the gist of what you needed to have to earn the point here. I hope that you kept track of your score as you went along. You want to be a little bit conservative on that. In 2021, the average score on this question was 1.31 points out of a total of four. So a lot of students found this question to be challenging. You have to do correct particle level representations. You had to be able to talk about Le Chatelier's principle. You had to know what conductivity and electrolytes meant. There was a fair amount going on in the four parts for this question. If you found this webcast to be helpful, like the video and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you get all my latest updates. Take care. Keep studying chemistry. You're going to do great.